Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblumen. You're watching the Theo Nightly video for the 12th of March, 2020, and the markets continue their sell off, meltdown, crash, whatever word you want to use for it, liquidation event, sell side activity, crisis, so on and so forth. We'll just do a quick update in tonight's video, sort of pick up the pieces of where the market fell and see where the future might be. Number one, this is the S&P futures. This is our quad market grid. The S&P, other markets were down over 10% in a single session per the futures. This does include a little bit of overnight activity from the cash close. So the NASDAQ was off almost 850, 860 points. S&P was off almost 300 points. The big headline, you're gonna see it on the cable news and evening news networks. The Dow was down another 2000 points. And as of this moment, the Dow Mini Futures are off 2,600 points. However, the weakest again is the Russell, which is off just a second ago, 13%. It's 163 points. In terms of sector performance, we'll take a quick look at that. We'll sort by percent change. Energy, which is XLE, along here with crude oil, was down 6%. Energy sectors, energy stocks in the sector were off 12.5. To be noticed, financials, another part of this list here, they were off 10% along with industrials, consumer discretionary, and I think interestingly enough, utilities, which are a defensive type of sector, risk off if you will, are also off 10%. Strongest sector of the day, and I put that in quotes because that is only down 7.5%, was healthcare. And that's where the crisis is, coronavirus, COVID-19, global pandemic, et cetera, healthcare is probably going to be one of those sectors that doesn't really stay unscathed, but certainly doesn't fall down 12% in one session. Now, in terms of stocks and performance, just a quick little, again, overview for the purpose of tonight's video, picking up the pieces, cruise lines, air, and other financial companies are in the crossfire. And we'll jump this out so we can see it together and look at the names a little closer. Again, it's getting an update. So for example, this is the stocks in the S&P 500 sorted by percent change. And you can also get days to earnings, but still. Norwegian Cruise Line is the weakest stock followed right behind it with Royal Caribbean and then Carnival Cruise. These things right here are leading or at least well-known cruise ships. That's where the heart of the virus, if you wanna call it that, cruise ship lines, cruise ship holdings are canceling, refunding, stopping trips, and that's gonna hit their bottom line. And uh, we're not gonna talk the virus, we're just talk how the financial impact is. These cancellations will affect earnings, will of course affect sales and revenue, and that's gonna show up in the next round of earnings, quarterly earnings, which are, for example, here, roughly 39 days away, or 33, or in Carnival, eight days away. So we can sort it like that as well. Most of these stocks in general will have earnings about 30, 40, something like that days away. But again, grouping these together, Norwegian Cruise, we can take a look at how that sold off just over here. We'll actually go to the daily chart and take a look at how this has transpired. So each crisis has a heart. The financial crisis back in 2007 and eight well, that was financial. Also some insurance names got caught up in that as well. Of course, Lehman is gone. Bear Stearns, gone. Those companies don't exist. Other companies receive bailouts. This particular crisis is centered around a pandemic that's called COVID or this coronavirus. So it's affecting stocks differently, but one of the heart is this, one of the first things we started seeing was these cancellations or these quarantines really on cruise ships and the massive cancellations that have happened since. So even pulling back to a weekly chart, we have to go to a monthly chart actually to figure out where the prior time that Norwegian Cruise Line traded under $10 and that's really off the chart here. So that's on play. Same for Royal Caribbean and the precipitous fall, heart of the maneuver, heart of the virus is transportation or cruise ships or airlines or in some cases, restaurants or casinos. We'll see this shortly, but that's part of it. So from 130 per share all the way to 30, that's Royal Caribbean. And then Carnival, 
It may seem very, very strange to say this, but that's why I'm doing the bigger picture update with you, just so we're not missing things. In terms of share prices, right now, 14 to 15 per share was last seen at the heart of the worst part of the financial crisis. So again, each crisis, each event, each sell-off, each liquidation has a specific heart or center. Part of that is transportation or retail or maybe even luxury type of entertainment. And that does include casinos to an extent. So there is the heart of the worst selling in terms of industry or grouping of business types. And again, this is stocks just in the S&P 500 and how they played. And then we can look at airlines as in United Air, which takes it back to 2015. And then others, including Alaska Airlines. This is nothing more than a sort by percent change in today's session. So Alaska Air is off the $100 handle all the way to 35. Delta Airline, probably have flown Delta at some point in your life. Those shares are taking a tumble from 60, almost 50% down near 30 per share. AIG is an insurance company, which I know that looks strange from a longer term perspective, but it too is feeling the brunt. So insurers, that also happened in the financial crisis, that is taking place now. Uh, prudent or prudential, prudential financial is also part of the strong sell-off. But not just that, here's Macy's and Kohl's. Kohl's being a relatively discount department store. Macy's may be a little higher end or whatever the perspective is, but still it's a department store that is seeing levels not seen since the financial crisis. Granted, it's been in a long-term downtrend and Kohl's has been relatively all over the place, but its stock as well is underneath where 2008 share prices traded. And then we can look at other companies all the way down Boeing. That's kind of a big one. If you follow along with us or trade Boeing or do any type of spreads in Boeing, the stock used to be at the 350, 450, 400 handle, or 300 thereabout, in a long-term trading range for many, many months. So that was good for in-out spreads or fade trades or back and forth, or at least some type of stability. And again, keep in mind, by the way, the Dow is priced. Each point in the stocks in the Dow translate to about seven points, or seven actually points, to the Dow Jones index. So given that Boeing is off this much, particularly $34 times that by seven. And that's a lot of, or a good portion of the Dow's 2000 point decline today. And this monthly chart tells a big picture as does the weekly, which is there is your support shelf. There is a long-term range consolidation and Boeing has been hit quite uh, much of the downside. So I won't go through all the names, but there are include financials, Halliburton, mainly your big names being hit in today's session and in general, would include oil stocks or oil services stocks, any type of leisure retail or cruise or transportation, and also financials, including insurance companies. As Don had mentioned to us in other updates during the session, some financial stocks, including Citigroup, which we can look at that just in a moment, but we can see the financial names here, XLF, which is your broad-based ETF. That's taken a large hit of the selling also Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, JP Morgan, as it loads, Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, and not on my list, but Citigroup has taken a big brunt of the selling. So Citigroup right now is down 15% in a single trading session. So these are things to think about. And the heart of this crisis is of course a virus and how it affects consumer behavior mostly staying home, being quarantined, canceling conventions, canceling sporting events, canceling concerts, canceling any type of large gathering. And of course, for 30 days at least, until we learn more details, flights back and forth from the US and Europe. And that could certainly escalate. So markets are a discounting function. Markets take the perspective of shoot first, ask questions later. So we don't know how far this is going to go or how deep this crisis is going to get, or how worse the virus is going to proceed, or the numbers that you may see the statistics of the infections or death rates. And the market's doing the best it can to price in the shocks to the consumer behavior. And of course, how that translates into consumer spending. 
And I guess the main story would be corporate profits and upcoming earnings. So knowing that that's going to be down, knowing that revenues will be down, you can't really predict the future that much, but the market is taking a discount and it's doing it very, very quickly. So that's why you're seeing these 2,000 point Dow days or lock limit downs that some of you may never have seen in your entire trading career. Some of you may have seen a couple of them, but here we are where they're happening at least quite more frequently than we might assume. And markets remain in meltdown. Don't be looking for the bottom. Don't be looking for this little magical spot to get long. Let this crisis play out. If you are participating in the market, do so with spreads. Risk management thinkers first. Don't think how much money I can make and how rich I can, can become when I get that little bottom and trade long right when the market turns back up. So far, and with the many moving pieces and moving parts going in the global economy, that hasn't paid very well. So safety, protection, risk avoidance, hedging, in-out spreads, or any type of process or procedure that keeps you safe or even on the sidelines or trading very, very quickly into rapid movement, intraday tactics if you wish, that's even risky for the most part, but spreads or any type of safety plays from the bigger picture. This will pass. We're not gonna see the market fall 2,000 Dow points every single day. Uh, that could happen 10 days in a row and that's about all the, the market can give us. So that's not gonna happen. There will be a stabilization period. There will be a bounce type of period, but it's not up to us to call that exact moment. It is up to us to protect our accounts, be safe, know where the selling is concentrated, stay away from those sectors and those markets, and as always, keep risk first. This is Corey Rosenblum with your Theo Notley video for March 12th, 2020.